This DVD is intended to show how you can safely enjoy your car on public roads. We won't be covering city or motorway driving, but concentrating on country roads, the sort of roads that you as a sports car enthusiast will enjoy. It's not about outright speed or exploring the limits of you or your car, or driving on the ragged edge, that's for the track. This is about being safe and by developing concentration, observation, anticipation and planning, giving a smooth, progressive drive, being at the right speed, the right position and the right gear with the car balanced, enabling you to be confident and in control. Now we can't cover everything in the DVD, but we will be looking at attitude, fitness of the car and you, aspects of car control, observation, cornering and the limit point, visual links, overtaking, and we'll be doing all of this in a flexible but systematic approach. Your attitude to driving is a very important part of being a safe driver. Unlike many motorists, our objectives may simply be to enjoy the drive. However, the primary objective should always be to arrive safely. Remember that despite driving a fast car, you have no obligation to be making progress all the time, and that you don't need to be reckless to enjoy driving. Before going for a nice drive, there's a few things to consider about yourself and your car. P stands for have I got enough petrol or diesel for the journey. O. Are the oil levels OK? The engine oil? The brake fluid? W. Are the water levels OK? D. Is there any damage on the car that might affect it being safe or legal? E. For electrics. Do the lights work? Do the windscreen wipers work? And then finally R is for the rubber. The tyres. Very important. Are the pressure set correctly? Is there any damage on the tyre? Have you got enough tread? Acceleration sense. The accelerator can be used to increase and decrease speed. Use of the throttle, smoothly adjusting the speed, relies on good observation and planning. Good acceleration sense avoids unnecessary braking. Is more comfortable for the driver and the passenger and less wear and tear on the car. A little bit of power. Off. A little bit of power. And gently increase. Off. That's it. So you're doing it all on acceleration sense. And gently squeeze. As you uncurl the steering wheel, your power increases. That's it. Oh yeah. So on a powerful car like this, if you was changing gear halfway round the bend, you obviously put the clutch down. If you don't do the old um, bringing the revs up and that, you just let put the clutch in and then start to let it back up. Yeah. You're going in the lower gear, you know you get that lurch, well that's exaggerated and on a bend you might as well pull your handbrake on. Good observations are crucial to safety. It can actually be more dangerous driving on a road that you know. You can become complacent, but what might be there today that wasn't there yesterday? Basically you're constantly moving your eyes and you're, uh, you're going to look in the far distance as far as you can see. Take a little pencil photograph of what you see. The mid-ground, the foreground, the mirrors. In the far distance, we're just constantly keeping your eyes moving. And it, as I say, it's like taking a little photograph of each of these views. And in your head, you have a 360 degree view of what's happening around you. And it's just constantly moving your eyes. And the faster you go, the more times you're looking because the picture's changing all the time. The road's lower down, is there any cross views? Although, no, there isn't. Just the hedge line. Just the hedge. Had the hedge been lower, you would get a cross view, but you would have dead ground below the hedge. Yeah. You know, you, you wouldn't be able to see no perfectly. Yeah. You just get a bit of a clue. What do you think about using the whole road? Well, the other side of the road. Something I've seen people do when yeah. there's clearly no oncoming traffic. Well, strictly you shouldn't. However, you've got to make sure there's no dead ground. You've got to make sure you can see 100%. Well, local knowledge, I know there's a golf club here. So, you know, you could get people, oh, yeah, it's oh. I've seen it. as if by magic, yeah. we use our eyes to see what's going on, but we should always use our other um, senses, and one of them is a sense of smell. In particular, before you suddenly go past this garage and smell diesel, you want to start looking for a trail of diesel on the road. Someone might have overfilled their tanks as they pull off a forecourt diesel slurps on the road, well diesel is very slippery. The limit point is the furthest point along the road of which you have an uninterrupted view of the road surface. You've got the two verges or the edges of the road, and like in the distance there you can see they go round the corner and there's an illusion 
that one side touches the other side. So as you get more and more practiced at it, you will glance at the limit point and then you'll glance in your mirrors, you'll glance across the bend for different views. But uh, the idea is that our speed is adjusted and we just keep pace with that point and moving away from us. If the point starts to move towards you, then obviously you need to slow down because it's indicating a reasonably tight bend. If it's racing towards you, it's a very tight bend and you need to slow down a lot. Visual links are things beyond the limit point. They give us a clue to which way the road may go, a clue to potential hazards ahead that are not yet visible. It's like when you, you spot something and you link it to what might happen or you're anticipating. And one of the, one of the really good ones, particularly on country roads, is um, you're driving along and you see someone at a bus stop on the other side of the road. So the link there is you think, oh, a bus might come along. Yeah. Now, you might, you know, so what, a bus might come along. But if you're on the country roads, but they're a little bit narrow, buses are quite big, you're going to want to know if the bus is coming around the corner on partly yeah. on your side of the road. So what you do is you, you oh right, bus, they're, they're, gonna, they're not going to wait there all day, they know the time of the bus. Yes. It's not going to be far down here. And, and as you approach these tight little bends, you maybe ease off the gas a little bit, anticipating, move over a little bit to the left. And as you come around the corner, if the bus is there, you just ease off or maybe pull over and stop, whatever you need to do. But it's taking all the drama out of it. Yeah. Rather than coming around them and panic and hit the brakes, it's oh, there it is. Change gear, carry on. Dealt with. Then we look at the positioning uh, with a bend, position on approach to a bend. For a right hand bend, favoured position would be slightly to the left. For a left hand bend, over towards the crown of the road, onto the right. Okay. They're the favoured positions. However, we might sacrifice those positions because of safety. For example, if we're going around the right hand bend, and we're thinking we want to be over to the left. We don't want to be too far for the left because it might be uh, manhole covers, yep. uh, crap road surface all crumbling and falling away. It could be um, cyclists, parked cars, all sorts of hazards. Likewise, if it's a left-hand bend and we want to go over towards the right or the crown of the road, again, we might sacrifice that ideal position because of traffic coming towards us. And we go through that, those phases, information, position, speed, got your gear, and then it says, in the books, it says accelerate around the corner, but I don't like people to think we're accelerating faster. So I say drive. Well, like a constant L constant. speed. Constant, yeah. So what you do, you've got your speed, you've got your gear, and you want to keep that speed as you go around the corner. And then as the corner starts to open up, i.e. the limit point is moving away, then you increase your speed, in proportion to the amount of steering you're taking off. Overtaking multiple vehicles. Always do this with extreme caution. There are very few roads where the volume of traffic coming the other way will permit it. If cars are spaced out enough, treat each car as an individual overtake, but you don't have to keep moving back in to the near side, but you can if need arises. Constantly reassess the situation to decide whether the next one in line is on. If cars are too tightly spaced, treat as one single long overtake. Don't overtake if you would have to force your way back into a small gap, remembering that gaps might close up ahead of you. Now try watching the next clip. Give a commentary and see what you can spot. Let's watch the clip again. I've had a go, we'll see what, uh, what I've picked out. We've got a, a sign telling us there's a junction on the right hand side. Consider vehicles pulling out of there. Sign telling us there's a road bending to the left, slow on the road, coming up to a 30 mile an hour speed limit. So we check our mirrors and adjust our speed. There's the car coming out of the junction, not causing any problems. And there's a sign on the left just telling us that there is some sort of temporary event. There's a car on a driveway that could have moved out, but we uh, had him covered. There's a footpath on the left hand side. We're on a bus route. The road narrows from both sides. Crossroads ahead. There's also a pub car park. We've now got um, another junction on the left, but it looks clear. We've got a parked car on the left-hand side of the road. Will the door open? We've taken out a wide position to pass the parked car. Warnings of a junction ahead and a bend. And so we take all these things into consideration. 